It is the radio segment that wants to know if it can come over for dinner tonight. Ooh. Laser Stories, the segment where we read weird news stories from around the globe, just like every other radio show does, except we have a laser, and those other idiots don't. This first laser story is out of Louisiana. A 22-year-old named Bianca White had one of the most proudest moments of her life happen recently. Oh, that's great. With cap and gown, she walked on stage with the other graduates and accepted her diploma with honors. That's awesome. And with honors. Yeah, no kidding. That's a lot of work, man. You earned it. She then waved to her family and friends and proceeded to walk off the stage, bursting with pride. Just one problem, though. Bianca never attended the school. Wait a minute, what? <laughs> like, yep. How did Bianca get her name called? Like, yeah. they ha- you can't just go up and get any diploma you want up there. <laughs> it turns out she came up with an elaborate plan that involved taking someone else's cap and gown, huh. somebody that couldn't make the ceremony. Plus, she also changed the name on the graduation list to her own name and almost got away with it. Oh, what? That's so... Yep. Why, though? Why go through all that much work? <laughs> Luckily, why not just do the schoolwork and yeah. then get an actual diploma? I don't know. Exactly. Luckily, somebody at the graduation figured it out, confronted her, then cops got involved, and now she's facing charges for theft and fraud. Ooh. Well, As for why she yeah. did it, authorities believe she was trying to trick her family into thinking that she was a graduate. Yeah. Oh, man. We didn't notice that you didn't go to school for four years, but now we're yeah. here at graduation. <laughs> All of a sudden. Weird. <laughs> Had no idea. This next legend story is out of Ohio. A 30-year-old woman named Nicolette Botsford was enjoying a snack while riding in the car with her mother the other day when something strange happened. Okay. Here's Nicole being interviewed by local media about what happened next. I felt something in my mouth, like hard, and I was like... This, I was thinking it was a tree root or a rotten nut. I mean, that happens. She turned the light on in the car, and she's like, it looks like a tooth. And at that point, I just pulled the car over oh on the God. side of the road. And sure enough, I was like, Mom, I think that's a human tooth. Oh, oh my God. Did she just tell us that she found a human tooth in her snacks? <laughs> yep. The human tooth was found in a little snack bag of planter's cashews. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh and my God, to make it, it even sick. better, make it even better, it had dried blood on it. No. Oh. at the factory that people's teeth are falling out and just <laughs> landing in random bags of peanuts or cashews. So, obviously she was horrified and oh. spit it out. Afterwards, she went to the hospital oh. for tests. So far, she doesn't know if she contracted anything from the tooth. Kraft told the Associated Press that the item found inside her bag was indeed a foreign object. Okay. But they wouldn't admit that it was a tooth. Oh, That's the word that they're using. <laughs> the company has decided to look into its manufacturing process and suppliers as a precaution, or just go to the factory and go like, all right, who's missing the tooth? Yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> this next laser story is out of Sheboygan, Wisconsin. A 61-year-old guy named David Neese is starring in a play in his local community theater. And oh. earlier this week, he was on the way to the show when the cops tried to pull him over on an arrest warrant for theft. But David drove off and got into a high-speed chase anyway. Ain't nobody got time for that. That's going to make things worse, David. (laughs) The police eventually caught him, but David told them that they would have to wait to arrest him until after the play because under no circumstances was he going to miss his grand performance. That's right. (laughs) Any true performer knows the show must go on. Mm -hmm. The police disagreed and arrested him on the spot, so in the squad car on the way to to jail, David did his lines for the officers. (laughs) It's like someone's going to hear it. It doesn't matter. I'm performing tonight. You will hear Macbeth from the back of your car. No word on if he got a standing ovation from the police when they put him in the cell, but we can confirm that he missed the play. Oh. Yeah. And his this cellmate. next story is out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. A 34-year-old woman named Ginger Sharp had to take a drug test last month as part of her probation stemming from forgery charges last year. Ooh. Okay. And when she tested positive for meth, she tried to convince her probation officer that it was medicinal meth. <laughs> <laughs> I, never heard of that uh, I mean, 
kind of smart, I gotta say. Yeah. But it's a probation officer, so I'm guessing they know what is allowed and what's not. Got glaucoma, yeah. real bad. <laughs> glaucoma. So <laughs> gotta use meth for that. <laughs> Ginger claimed it was prescribed by her doctor and even had a pill bottle with a fake label that said meth written in Sharpie oh on it. Oh, my God. Don't! You see, I'm narcoleptic, and this stuff <laughs> keeps me up. <laughs> Inside the bottle, it contained five milligram methamphetamine pills. Unfortunately for Ginger, her probation officer didn't buy it oh, for some reason. Weird. That's weird, especially with that real looking label that she made. <laughs> yeah. So now she's facing more forgery charges. They also charged her with identity theft because she put her real doctor's name on the back of the pill bottle. Oh, genius. Surprised that she actually put the real doctor's name and not some made up like Dr. Methenstein. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the meth master. <laughs> yeah. This next laser story is out of shopping headquarters. According to a new study, the average American will spend $448 on drunk shopping this year. Hey, I agree. Yep. That's a lot of money. And if those projections are right, they've doubled from last year where we bought $206 worth of stuff after we'd been drinking. Whoa. I, you know I, think- been, I literally bought a 12 case of artichoke hearts once when I was drunk and they got delivered to my house. I had no <laughs> idea I ordered them. I yeah. still ate a them. A whole but flat I, of artichoke literally hearts? Literally, it was a flat. It was like a restaurant like palette Yeah, because you, you get drunk and then you get into conversations. You're like, oh, I should totally buy that. Then you hop on Amazon. Yeah, that's the it's Amazon. It gets you. Don't drink in yep. prime. Ah, don't drink in prime. That should be their <laughs> new slogan. By the way, those numbers include the money that you drunkenly spend on food as well. Oh, but yeah. the money we spend on buying stuff when we're drunk isn't anywhere close to the amount we spend actually getting drunk. The study found the average person will spend almost two grand a year Whoa, on booze. Dang. Yeah, and that's, that averages out to just under thirty-seven dollars a week. And that's like box wine yeah, prices, that's right? Stuff. <laughs> this next laser story is out of the crazy world of tomorrow. A new survey asked more than fourteen thousand people what major scientific and technological breakthroughs they think that they'll see in their lifetime. Oh, okay. Here are the results. A cure for cancer. 67% of us think that we'll see a cure for cancer happen during our yeah, lifetime. I hope <laughs> that would be well, amazing. aren't there already some cancers that they can cure? Yeah, yeah, no, they're, they're developing There's it, some. so hopefully they can cure all of them. They're, work, they're working a lot on that, I've noticed. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I paid attention. Yeah, yeah that's uh, good. Hope, hopefully that's one we do see. 64% said they think that they'll be that we will be working alongside robots very soon. Also yeah. already happening. Look at any yeah. manufacturing job, guys. <laughs> right. Or this radio show. Which one of us is real? Which one of us is a robot? <laughs> we're, we all know we're all robots. robots. Yeah. yeah. Fifty-five <laughs> percent said that they believe robots will be in every home in the next twenty years. I can see it. You guys, it's already happening. Like, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I guess Roombas? Roombas? Yeah, I got a, I got a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Is a could you consider Alexa a robot? Yes, absolutely. Oh, you're right. I, I mean, it doesn't or, have arms. And I legs, don't even though. consider like one of those smart doorbells a robot, for goodness sake. Really? It, yeah. it has to have arms. No, and it legs doesn't have or, to have arms and legs. Or at okay? least one arm. No. Okay. Hot question of the day. Hot question of the day. <laughs> Text it in seven eight five nine two. What? qualifies as a robot. Does it have to have arms and legs or does it have to be able to think on its own? What is actually a robot? Because I feel like we are actually already living with robots in our houses. 51% of people said flying cars will be a real thing in the not so distant future. I think, don't they already have that too? Yeah, I think Uber's doing it right now. Or they're called helicopters. I don't know. (laughs) 41% of us believe that most of the population will be living under the sea at some point. Well, I don't think that's by choice, guys. Yeah, that's just that's flooding. That's just global warming. 33% said that controlling the weather will be something that the president could control in their future. Oh, Wouldn't it just always be sunny then? No. Not for some people. That's yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, 18% said that they think they hope to kiss a robot in their lifetime. <laughs> See, so Again. Robots have to have lips now. Back to yeah. our question. Have you guys not seen what's going on in the world of sex dolls? I'm sorry. I, oh, wait. Yeah. Right. I saw like, a video yes. the other day <laughs> on a reputable site. They were yeah. just sharing something from an event, yes. okay? But yeah, yeah right. they definitely already have people kissing robots, doing way more than that. <laughs> it's true. 11% think a robot will be their best friend. 
If you consider an iPhone a robot, then I have a best friend robot. And 6% said that they believe a robot will commit a crime against them, like steal their wallet or take their food in the near future. Yeah, I could see that. What are they going to do with food, though? Why are robots stealing food? You don't have to eat. Leave my food alone, man. Yeah, just to be a jerk. Just to be a bully. Just to take your food for no reason. Will the robot ever be able to hump a shoe like an actual turtle? I don't think so. I don't think so. The robot will never be able to do this, ever. That's the sound of a turtle humping a shoe, which means Laser Stories has come to an end for the day. We'll do it again, same time, on Monday. I'm Bradley Johnson with 1-800-DUI-AWAY. Not getting behind the wheel after drinking is the best choice. But if you're pulled over, the next best choice is to call 1-800-DUI-AWAY. It's another Jubal phone tab. And weekday mornings on the 20s. Only on moving 92.5. Hello. Hi, I was looking to speak with Jackie. This is Jackie. Hi, Jackie. My name is Chet, and I work for Construction. One of your neighbors gave me your phone number. Okay. What, what can I do for you? Well, I know that they said you're on vacation. Um, right. They recommended, though, that I should call you because of what happened. So, sorry to bug you. <laughs> okay. So, what happened? Well, not a huge deal, but there was a little mix-up regarding a job that we were hired for. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything about any jobs. So, the situation is, we were supposed to demo a house near you, and unfortunately, we got the address mixed up and ended up at your place on accident. So, what? Yeah, but you know what? You're on vacation. Well, you, okay. you can just deal with it when you get home. I, I didn't mean to bother you. I'm sorry. No, 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 yeah. no. Can can you please just tell me what happened? Just tell me what happened. You know, I'd rather I can just leave a post-it note on your door for when you get back with my phone no, number on it. No, then... tell me now. Tell me now what happened. Um, I'm really not sure where to start. <laughs> um, the construction business is crazy sometimes. <laughs> You know. Yeah, this is crazy. Just uh, tell me what happened. Okay. Um, sort of accidentally kind of started tearing down your house instead. What? Yeah. Got the addresses mixed up. Oh, my God. Are you mm. kidding me? Tearing no. down my house? Started to. Good news is your neighbor stopped us and was like, oh, hold on. I don't. I don't think Jackie oh, wants her house torn down. <laughs> uh, oh my God. Yeah, what like, did you do? Like I said, the construction business kind of crazy sometimes. Um, we broke all the windows. We did do that. You did what? Broke all the windows. It's kind of how we start the demo process. You did not touch my windows. You're right. We didn't. I, well, I didn't. We, that's not how we do it. We use a machine. So I didn't technically touch them, I guess. But we broke them Oh, all. my God. I am shaking right now. I am so furious. You sound upset. Yeah. What, what, what do you think? They're telling me you, you, you're starting to tear down my house. Yeah, that's that's what I'm telling you. Um, So we got the windows. We took down the chimney and also one of the walls. What the f*** are you even doing? Like, why are you even talking to me right now well because i thought i should let you know you know and and also real quick i do want to add i don't really think we can completely take the blame on this one are you kidding me no who's supposed to take the blame for tearing down my house another construction company (laughs) well no i mean it was us that started the work but you do have to admit your house looks a little run down and junky from the outside so it was easy shut the up i i i I can't listen to you anymore just shut up Okay. Well, can I talk now? No, I told you to shut up. Well, okay, but I'm sorry to talk one more time, but I just have to know, are we going to sit here in silence then? Like, because I'll shut I'll stop talking if you want me to. So I don't up. know what the f- to do at this point. Okay, but you want me to shut up though, right? Yes, that's what I f- told you. I don't want to hear you. Well, if I shut up, how am I going to tell you it's a prank phone call? It's what? Yeah, it's a prank phone call. Sorry to talk when you told me to shut up, but it's a prank phone call. <laughs> your house is fine. You need to explain yourself right now. Okay, I will. This is Jubal from Brook and Jubal in the morning doing a phone tap on you, and your husband Scott set you up. 
So my house hasn't been torn down? Correct. Your house has not been torn down. Your husband is playing a joke on you, and I'm the dude doing the joke <laughs> on, on you. Oh, my God. Explaining it really horribly right now. But I, I, oh, my God. <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> he said you guys are on vacation together, and he set up a time for me to call you and mess with oh you. So, God. I'm like going to cry. <laughs> Happy anniversary. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up every morning with Jubal phone tabs. Weekday mornings on the 20s. Only on Moving 92.5. Need LASIK? Trust the experienced team at the LASIK Center at Evergreen Eye Center. No glasses, no contacts, no limits. What will you do? LASIK at evergreen.com. Moving 92.5. Brooke and Jubal's second date update. Today's second dater met the girl he went out with, where I've met almost every single girl I've ever dated. Uh-huh. ChristianMingle.com. <laughs> you know, <laughs> member of that site since it started. You know, I, I, I just love it so much. Now, that's where Nathan apparently met the girl he wants us to call today. Nathan, what's up? How are you, man? Good. good. I, I love yourself, guys. Thank Thanks. you. Appreciate it. So tell us a little bit about meeting the girl you want us to call today. What's her name? Mia. Mia, okay, so you met her on this website? Yeah, did the normal thing where both expressed interest. I messaged her through the website, and from there it was off and on for a little bit, and then for about a month straight we were chatting probably almost every other night. Sometimes it would be three, four days to go by, but it started progressing from there. So you guys talked a lot before you actually met in person? That's the thing. We actually haven't met in person yet. What? Yeah. I this was a second date update. Yeah. Kind we, of. Na- Nathan's one of those guys that date never actually happened. Yeah. I, I'm i walking to the date, and I get a phone call from her, mm-hmm. and she tells me that she's got an emergency and that she's going to have to cancel. She's flying to California. What? You were actually at the place that you're going to meet her, and she called you and said that she was flying to California? I mean, I was literally uh, pulling into the restaurant, practically. Oh, man. You didn't happen to notice if she was, like, in the restaurant or, like, in the vicinity of you when she called you, right? Like, maybe she was waiting for you and then saw you and didn't like your outfit and was like, oh, no, no. thank you. You didn't see her anywhere. Well, look, I've been to meet someone before that I didn't like, and then I just took off when I saw him. No, Uh, but you're, like, the ultimate jerk. You wouldn't spend months talking to him. So you didn't see her around, you did you? Uh, no, and that's part of the other thing about this that's crazy enough. Uh, she doesn't even have a profile pic, so I've never seen a picture of her. What? Excuse Wait, you've me, never, what? You've never seen a picture of this girl? Uh, no, I, I couldn't tell you what she looks like, and I had asked, and she said I'd rather develop a relationship. Yeah, How do you start talking to someone on a dating website that doesn't have a profile picture? I know that they're out there. They usually have like a silhouette of somebody mm-hmm. that hasn't uploaded it or whatever. But why would you... I don't know. I would not talk to somebody... Mm-hmm on a dating website that didn't have a profile picture? In all honesty, at that point, that day I just was going around and looking for people online and it's somewhat near the area, and I just sent a, a message saying, hey, how's it going? Just Are casting you? a wide net. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I'll be honest with you. That day, yeah, I didn't have anything to do. I was on the, the site, figured I'd, I'd strike up a conversation. Okay. Right, so you went to go meet her, and she called you right before and said that something came up and she had an emergency. Do you believe her, or do yeah. you think she was lying to you? Well, I was livid at first and pissed, and but the conversation actually went on. She wanted to talk to me while she was waiting for her flight. Okay. So it made me believe her, and I sort of tried to ask her what was going on. Is there anything I could do? Do well, you need any help? Nathan, let's face it. There's no way she's lying to you because you met her on a Christian website, right? and Christians <laughs> don't lie. You know that she's telling the truth. But she, you actually oh, yeah. stayed on the phone and chatted with her while she was waiting for her plane to leave. Yeah. Okay. And you, do you think that maybe you're getting catfished, like she's just not who she says she is? I mean, I want to believe in the best, but I've texted her a few times since, and I haven't gotten messages back. So at this point, there's a a large portion of me that's thinking, what in God's name is going on? I don't know if it's a kid, (laughs) a boyfriend there, ex-husband. I don't know how long she's in California for. I, I just don't know what's going on at all. And how long ago has it been since you talked? About five days. It's been about five days since you actually spoke with her. Yeah. Still, an emergency. You don't think she might need a little more time with whatever it is? I mean, in hindsight, probably. 
<laughs> I might have jumped the gun a little bit, but I, at this point, I don't understand the missed text messages. Okay. Well, and you've got to be emotionally invested. I mean, a lot of people would consider this a relationship, mm-hmm. even though you haven't even met yet. For sure. All right, man. Well, we'll play a song, come back, call her, see if we can get her on the phone and get your second date update, okay? Sounds good. Moving 92.5. Brooke and Jubal in the Mornings, second date update. I'm going to be honest. I really don't care if Nathan, who's on the phone for a second date update, gets a second date out of this. What? I just want to know two things about the girl that he was supposed to meet up with on his date. One, what does she look like? Mm-hmm. And two, why did she have to go to California on an emergency? Yeah, that's, that's all I really want to know. Me. Yeah, <laughs> I want to know why she had to bail on him before their date even started. If you're just tuning into the second date update, Nathan is on the phone. He wants to call Mia. They met on a Christian dating website. Interesting note, she doesn't have a profile picture. He was just chatting up people that day, and he has no idea what she looks like. Anyway, they were supposed to meet for dinner, and when he was walking up to the restaurant, she called, said she had an emergency in California, and had to go. So we haven't heard from her since, and he's wondering why she hasn't been calling him back. Now, you do believe her that she had some sort of an emergency in California? I don't know. I do believe her, but there's part of me that is just like, why hasn't she reached back out yet? I, I don't understand it. Why do you have so much trust in this person that you've never seen? I, because of the conversations, they were in-depth. I mean, who knows? Maybe she's really good, but it was consistent in with just the interest and the stories. I mean, these weren't like five-minute chats or yeah. anything like that. We, we really got in-depth. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Well, I'm going to dial the phone number right now, see if she picks up the phone, and maybe we can find out. What happened in California? Or, I mean, if you want a second date, too, I guess we can do that. Yeah. Right. Do you want a second date with her? <laughs> Let's hear what the explanation is. <laughs> oh, okay. So you're just Smart like man. us. You just want to know what went on in California that she had to call in on your date. All right, I'm going to dial the number right now. All right. Hello? Hi, right, can I speak to Mia, please? Uh, this is she. Hey, Mia, how are you? This is Jubal from Brook and Jubal in the Morning. From where? Brook and Jubal in the Morning, the radio show. I'm on the radio? Yes, you are. How are you? Uh, I'm fine. I'm calling you because we received an email about you from one of our listeners. Okay. His name is Nathan, and Nathan emailed us because he was supposed to go out on a date with you, and then you ended up having an emergency that you had to go to in California. Since that day, Nathan has been wondering why you're not answering his text messages, so he emailed us to call you and ask why. Okay, this is... This is weird. (laughs) I know it is. But Nathan wants to know if you don't like him, if you don't want to see him, something like that. If you you don't want to see him, just tell us. We'll tell Nathan, and he won't bug you anymore. But other than that, he's wondering if you still want to go out with him. So is there anything that we can tell Nathan from you? Just uh, tell him I'll call him, and sorry, I've been been busy. So you do want to see Nathan again? I'm just, I'm really busy right now, so I just don't know when. Okay. I just don't know when I'll. I'll well, I appreciate you talking to us for a few minutes. I, we won't take much more of your time, but I just have to know, do you want to see Nathan again? Because it sounds like you don't, the way you said that. If you don't, mm-hmm. I'll let him down easy for you. I just, look, I'm, I'm doing some stuff in my personal life that I just need to, I, I, I can't, I don't want him to be involved in. Okay. So your, your emergency was legit when you called him at the restaurant and said that you had an emergency. I was speculating that you were lying. I'm in California. You are. Still. Oh, why did you fly so last minute, though? Look, I'm, I'm a little embarrassed about it. It was for a job. I don't, I don't want Nathan to judge me for it. You're embarrassed about the work that you do? Uh, promise you won't tell him this. Sure. I mean, I'll look, I'll tell him, I will tell him that you want to see him again, but I won't tell him any other details if they're really embarrassing. So I'm doing a photo shoot for Playboy. What? Oh, yeah, that's right. They started doing that again. I forgot. You're on a Christian mingle site? And you're... Just because I appreciate my body does not mean I am not a good Christian. Right. I am just using the body God gave me. Okay, so you're, okay. you're doing a photo yeah. shoot for Playboy. Yeah. Nice. Are you serious? Yes. 
It's a job. Okay, that's. I'll tell you why that confuses me because he told us about how he met you, and he said on your dating profile you didn't even have a profile picture. Mm -hmm. Normally, people that would pose for Playboy would have a lot of pictures on their dating profile. Okay, but also people who pose for Playboy tend to be treated differently because of the way they look. Like I wanted okay. Nathan to get to know me for me, wow. you know, for wow. like my brain and my personality, and not my, you know. You are and you talked to him a bunch. Yeah. You never brought up what you did for a living? I didn't want him to think I was some hussy or not a good Christian or whatever, because I am. I have a really good relationship with God, okay. and so I just happen to do this <laughs> for a living. When were you going to drop this news on him? Well, I wanted to get to know him, and I wanted him to get to know me, and I wanted to build a solid foundation so that he knows where I'm coming from. You yeah. know what I mean? So I, it's not like... Because there's so many stereotypes, and I hate that. There's so many stereotypes of women that pose nude and models and, and just, you know, there's so much wrapped up in it. And not everybody is the attention-seeking hussy that they're, put, you know. Right. So that's a stereotype. If you got a, like that. You got a great body. God has gifted you with wonderful <laughs> looks. You might as well use them to your advantage and make a little dough. I don't. <laughs> right? That's exactly right. <laughs> and you, you said that you want to get to know him on another level. Before you go into all that. Right. Right. That's perfect because you sort of just did that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you mean? Nathan is actually on the other line and heard exactly what you just said. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. You, you promise. You've already been this far. You might as well say hi to Nathan. <laughs> <sighs> hey, Mia. Someone sounds excited. Yeah. Yeah. That's the best news I've ever gotten in a second date update. How's it going? Yeah. Oh, God. I'm sorry. I didn't want you to find out this way. But, uh, I, I don't even know what to think anymore. I mean, of all the reasons you went to California, this wasn't even anywhere near the list. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that I, I hate it. I don't know that I, I know I don't like it, but. The, oh. the people in my life, I don't know how they would react if, if we went down this road and you <laughs> weren't Playboy. Yeah. I don't want to be that person who judges you. I, I sort of understand where you're coming from. I mean, believe me, it's not like I haven't seen the Playboy before, and but I don't know what to think. You bad boy, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make me a bad person. It doesn't make me a bad Christian. I, I really, I actually love what I do, and I think God made me for this. Nathan... Are you saying that you don't want to see Mia because she poses for these type of magazines? I mean, I definitely like to see her. Uh, <laughs> the day, uh, I, see, you and know, this is why I was worried. Cause guys treat me differently when they see me in person, you know? And, like, I don't want to be treated yeah, you you want to be treated like every other uggo out there. I understand, but <laughs> unfortunately for you, you're not. Nathan, so are you worried that the, it's the people in your life that are going to judge you if you were to go out with Mia now? I guess I am. That, now that I'm thinking about it, if we do end up going out, I guess I'm worried about what other people would think. On the other hand, we had an amazing connection, and I, I am a guy. I'm a man, you know, so <laughs> yeah. I definitely would like to uh, would see her and meet her. Okay. I will say, I know that my husband would have a problem if I was taking pictures naked for other men to look at. Mm -hmm. I mean, he would, period. But it's a job, you know? It's like it's like being an actor and having to kiss somebody else. It's not It's not like that's well, my if... personal soul. I mean, yes, it's my body, but my body in this case is just, you know, it's, it's like an accessory. <laughs> and Nathan, if you like Mia, who cares what anybody else thinks, really? Yeah. You guys had a lot of good conversations and stuff like that. Like, if she was a porn star and you really loved her, then who cares what your parents think or your friends? Uh, that one might be a bit different, but yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Love conquers all, right? Yeah. So, would you go out? Okay, Mia, would you go out with Nathan again? We'll pay for a second date. Please. You guys didn't even really go out in the first time, so would you go out with Nathan officially? I mean, if he doesn't think I'm a bad Christian. <laughs> okay. Nathan, are you going to be an idiot and pass up a date with a Playboy model? <laughs> I will pay for it. Um, Mia, how long are you even going to be in California for? Honestly, I, I don't know. Um, this is kind of a big job opportunity for me, and I really want to not blow it. So 
But at the end of the day, I'd, we had an unbelievable connection, and I did, at the very least, like to meet her in person and see if the chemistry is there in person as well. Sweet. Yes. Awesome. Woo-hoo. You guys can talk about it more in depth in person. Mm-hmm. That sounds Great. good. And Mia, uh, just another question. What what issues are you in? Oh, come on. Like next October? Rebo. I want to know. It's show research. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> in the morning. Everybody texting in at 78592 wants a date with Mia from today's second date update. <laughs> yes, they do. It's Brooke and Jubal in the morning. And if you missed today's second date update, Nathan wanted to call Mia. They actually met on a Christian dating website, mm-hmm. and he didn't even see her picture before they met, and I guess she was stunning. Wow. Anyway, the reason she wasn't really getting back to him was because she was gone in L.A. taking some photos from Playboy because they're doing photos again. Yeah. yeah, but Playboy's You know, they so- stopped doing, like, photo shoots for a while, but now they're doing doing them again. Yeah, like, but they're doing the classy ones. ones. They're not doing yeah. the nude ones anymore. I mean, it's still, yeah. like, a little racy, right? Yeah, and it's but, still cool to be a Playboy. And, you know, you could celebrate the body God gave you <laughs> as a Christian. I don't see why not. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't see why not either, but Nathan was bothered by it, though. Yeah, well, yeah. I've also never been considered a good Christian, so but, I, mean, yeah. I don't know if I have the right opinion. <laughs> can you imagine, though, not seeing a girl... Like, she could be anything. And she's a Playboy model. Like, this guy hit I mean, the jackpot. Yeah, it's pretty the, lucky. But at the same time, he didn't because he's, like, yeah. morally. I can't it's like, it. I will barely even go look at an apartment if it doesn't have a photo up. Right? Let alone go on a date with somebody. <laughs> I know. It's, it's either going to be amazing or a rat-infested mess. <laughs> Seriously, remember, if you want to do a second date update, all you have to do is email the show, and we will call the person who didn't call you back. Moving 92.5. All right, Brooke, you're going for 32 wins in a row today. And don't forget, all week long, it's a special edition of Winbrook's Bucks. It's Victoria Clipper Week, where no matter what happens, win or lose, you get a special prize from Clipper Vacations. And today, you're going to be playing Marcy in Mount Vernon. What's up, Marcy? Hey. Hey, Marcy. Hey. You sound a little down, hey, man. I know, right? Yeah. What's okay. going on, Marcy? You need you to talk okay, about buddy? something? You all right? I'm okay. I'm just heading to work. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of those days, yeah. huh? A weekday. Kind of happens yeah. every day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I hear you. Sorry for your loss. All right, Brooke is heading out of the studio. Marcy, the game's played like this. you got 30 seconds to answer as many questions as possible. If you don't know one, just say pass, and you have to beat Brooke outright to win, okay? Oh, okay. All right, and I'm pulling for you because I want you to win this $100 so that you can retire and quit your job. I just want to. I just want to beat Brooke. Really? You don't okay. even need the money. Okay, then. That, too. Okay, right, I, I don't want that, too, but I mean, <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, here we go. Your time starts now. Which famous Star Wars actor finally got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame? Um, pass. A romp or a bevy refers to a group of what hairy aquatic mammal? A uh, walrus. The shortest person to ever play in the NBA was how tall? Five, five. What is the French word used when speaking about someone's personal driver? Silver. The highest rank possible in the Boy Scouts is what? Eagle. Got that in. We'll bring Brooke back into the studio. So, Marcy, I know you're down and out having to go to work today. What do you do for work? I am a receptionist at a chiropractic what kind of chiropract- Chiropractic clinic? Do you at least get yeah. free back cracks and things? <laughs> That I do. Oh, well, that's fun. there's a positive. Oh, maybe not. She's like, yeah, no, <laughs> no it's, yeah. It's, it's nice. <laughs> yeah, it sounds did lovely. I, did I just walk into her lying to herself again? Uh, yeah, a little <laughs> okay. bit. All right, Brooke has got her headphones on. You ready? Yeah. Okay, your time starts <laughs> now. Which famous Star Wars actor finally got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame? Uh, Mark Hamill. A romp or a bevy refers to a group of what hairy aquatic mammal? Uh, seal. The shortest person ever to play in the NBA was how tall? Five foot four. What is the French word used when speaking about someone's personal driver? Chauffeur. The highest rank possible in the Boy Scouts is what? Eagle Scout. What kind of nut grows out of apples and has a poisonous shell? Uh, cashew. Okay. Got that in. Let's send it on over to the scoreboard and see how you guys did with Jose. You have elbows and you have knees, so touch them. Very nice. <laughs> Bolaños. Marcy, you got two correct today. Nice. 
Yeah, there you go. Something to look forward to, Brooke. Yeah. Four correct. Ooh. Sorry, Marcy. Yeah, sorry, Marcy. I didn't it's mean okay. to defeat you today. It sounded yeah. like yeah. it already happened, though, so it's not my fault. <laughs> This is the most depressing Winbrook's Bucks we've ever played. Yeah. And we've played some pretty depressing Winbrook's Bucks before. Hey, Marcy, so. we're all in it together, man. Yeah. <laughs> no hundred dollars for you. Brooke, it's her 32nd win in a row. Let's go over the answers. Which famous Star Wars actor finally got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame? That would be Mark Hamill, who played Luke Skywalker. A romp or a bevy refers to a group of otters. Aww. The shortest person ever to play in the NBA, five foot three, Muggsy Bogues, and he played for 14 seasons. And he was one of my favorite players because I'm a short dude, too. Yeah, he was awesome. Yeah, and you know he's lying. Like, he's got it probably 5'1", right? <laughs> he could dunk, too, which is crazy. It was. Why well, is crazy? What's the French word used when speaking about someone's personal driver? Chauffeur. The highest rank possible in the Boy Scouts is Eagle Scout. What kind of nut grows out of apples and has poisonous shells? Cashews. They grow in tropical climates like Brazil and Africa. Mm. Marcy, I'm sorry you didn't win the money, but just for playing today... You want a Clipper Vacations getaway for two to Victoria, B.C. on the Clipper. Awesome. Go to ClipperVacations.com for more information on their spring sale that's happening right now. Okay, Marcy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You need welcome. a getaway, Marcy. You got it. Yeah, you do. I do. You need you're a break. Right. Take I need a vacation. A raise? <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, that's a different thing. Let's but start, yeah. yeah, let's start with the vacation. Yeah, we can't help with that one. Yeah, right. I mean, we could maybe call your boss if you want. You want to get him on the phone I right mean, now? We could talk to him about it. You can. No. All right. Well, maybe we'll do that at some it, point. But... Maybe detail why you deserve a raise first, and then we'll call him or her. <laughs> All right, remember Young Jeffrey's Song of the Week. If you missed it, it's coming up at 9, 10, and we'll play Winbrook's Bucks same time on Monday. Moving 92.5 has your...